Hey guys, it's Elise Montoya. So today I'm continuing my little talk about writing and basically it's uh, organizing your ideas. What I wanted to talk to you guys about was organizing your ideas and kind of keeping on track and visualizing everything. So, um, because visualizing can really help a lot uh, with some people. Um, so one of the first things I want to recommend is um, mind mapping. Mind mapping is incredibly, incredibly simple, but it can take on, it, it, it can basically become your story outline. That's how powerful a tool it is because it's such, it's so versatile. Um, there's, I mean, clearly you don't need to do anything crazy. All you need is a piece of paper and a pencil and then you can start drawing circles and just, you know, start making bubbles for related ideas and branching out. But if you want to do more specific, you know, kind of targeted stuff, or if you want to do something a little bit more broad that would, you'd have a little trouble putting on a regular piece of paper, you can try uh, Poplet. Poplet is a fantastic internet tool. It's free for the first few uh, mind maps that you do, and then after that I believe you have to pay for more. But the, the services are pretty... Um, pretty upfront, so it's not like they bar you from anything just because you didn't pay for more mind maps. Basically, it uh, allows you to um, color code your bubbles so that you can kind of better group your ideas. It also, um, you know, I mean, of course, there's all the basics of font size, font color, that kind of thing, but, and then, you know, like uh, being able to rearrange it all wherever you want, but the really cool thing about Poplet is its capability of allowing you to insert things like hyperlinks, uh, videos, and photos. Those are awesome. That's something that you can't do on paper. So if you're trying to come up with maybe just something to like a like an inspiration board, or if you want to come up with informational stuff, but it happens to just be in a video. Um, Poplet will let you put it on there, and it's really cool. So you know I've. I started doing like an outline for this game project, which is now defunct, but um, it, it really helped me organize my thoughts and you can organize it to however, however it is that you see fit. What's really cool about it is that it lets you, um, if you're doing maybe a story outline or, you know, a plot, line, plot outline, you can do multiple plot lines at, running concurrently. So let's say you have your main uh, conflict, then, you know, it kind of branches off into a bunch of sub-conflicts. Like maybe the, the center, let's say that the center is going to be just the, the, the primary storyline. But then branching off to the sides are like all the subplots, like maybe character stories, like whatever personal things that each of the characters are going through, or maybe some stuff that's going on in the world at large, in the, in the setting at large. So you'd start kind of making bubbles um, running alongside the the main storyline and it's it's really nice because it kind of serves then as a timeline to help you see when everything is happening how everything is happening how everything is related so it it's poplet is an, is an awesome awesome tool and I really recommend it if you want to um, try to organize your thoughts now of course there is the classic um, form of brainstorming and idea organization, which are index cards. Lots and lots of writers swear by them. They say that they do their entire books just using nothing but, you know, index cards. So, like, I've, I've never really used index cards too much, but, um, that's, that was just, that was just my decision. However, uh, I mean, you can go ahead, what's really nice about the the index cards is that they, they kind of force you to kind of keep things to the bare essentials and keep, by having everything just boiled down, down to just the important stuff you find yourself not being caught up in you know little rabbit holes of things that aren't necessarily that vital like you know description or like you know how how character looks or something like that like uh, unless it moves the plot forward or it's um, incredibly important to the character or incredibly important to the setting, if you can't fit it onto the index card, don't put it on. You know, that's one thing that I think I've gathered from the index card method. 
Uh, you can go ahead and arrange it in a sequential matter on a, a cork board or to, like tape it up to the wall or however, just arrange it on your carpet. Just, um, you know, you can, you can organize those cards however you like. But uh, basically, there's, there's lots of different index card tips that you could probably find online about what, um, just how it is that you can make use of them. So that, that's, as far as that goes, you can go ahead and try and do that. Um, I can't say too much on the matter because, I, like I said, I didn't really use those too much. Um, I, was, I was always more of a, a straight list kind of girl and, like I said, mind maps. I was mind maps and lists. So um, I mentioned lists. So now basically what I'm saying is um, what I did was I created charts, charts and lists for my, for my uh, plots that was... I used Word and I made like a like a table and I had um, a number column on the left side, the actual plot, uh, the scene description in the center, and then maybe like a checkbox on the side to see if I could check off when I've done that or what have you. So um, or like um, I could go at, like you can you can code every scene too um, by having um, like a scene. This one one scene can be. P1, which would be plot 1, which would be the primary plot, or and then the next scene, though, would actually address the subplot. So then that would be P2, so that would be like the secondary plot going on uh, concurrent with the primary plot. So that's, that's another column that you can do. Sorry, I don't really have um, a visual that I can give you. I do have, I mean, I do have my own notes, but I, that's not really something I can share. So, um... You know, that, that was something that I would do. And then, like I said, uh, this is the same thing as with index cards. When you're doing the scene description in the center of your chart, you would just keep it to the bare essentials of the plot. Only the things that move the plot forward. You don't want to sit there and talk about how, you know, like the, the character fluff about, like, you know, this is who, how the character is and this is who they are. And you don't need that. What you want to focus on is just, like, what makes things move along, what starts catapulting the characters forward into action. Uh, so, you know, that's, that's, that's basically a chart in, you know, basically. Um, next I would do like just a list, just a basic list. I would just do, like I said, P1, this happens, P2, uh, secondary plot thread this happens, and then so on and so forth. So that's so that was what I did. It was very kind of bare bones, straight, just straightforward. So that that was that was how I handled that. And usually you can go ahead and, um, even if for major novels, um, you should only need like maybe a few pages at most to um, plot out your story if, if you're keeping to just the main elements that move the plot forward. Uh, next. Let me see, if you're trying to come up with um, a way to pitch your story or just a way to make yourself feel like it's something that you can do, what you can try is a pitch board. This is an example of a pitch board. This is the one that I made for my class, um, I think two months ago. And it's for a screenplay called My Guardian Dear. It's supposed to be a mystery thriller. Um, the basic, the basics of this is that since it was a screenplay, it was supposed to have a lot of visuals on it. It was supposed to um, be very, uh, it like just have the essentials, basically the essential information. So on the left, it was all the characters. I had just for fun, I put in quotes of what like some of the, the most iconic quotes that they would say, um, illustrating who they are, and then of course their pictures with each name. Then the center was all the most important information. That was the log line, that was the genre, that was the tone, format, setting, and target audience. Again, this is for a screenplay. For maybe a comic book, you might want to focus on stuff like um, the complementary art styles, uh, how many issues it would actually be, um, stuff like that. Uh, and then over here, on the far right side, was the uh, plot. See, this is, again... Uh, when you're organizing your ideas, it's best just to keep to what's most important because then you kind of keep anchored in what it is that you really need to kind of make the story structured and feel like there's a sense of movement. 
you know, that the things are kind of progressing along. You know, the worst things the story can do is feel like nothing is happening or that it's not moving forward. You can go ahead and have really cool, cutesy characters, but the problem is, is that they're not doing anything, then nobody's going to care. They need to have uh, an impetus. They need to have something that they're fighting for or working towards or, you know, just whatever. Uh, in this case, I had for my Guardian Deer, I did Act 1, Act 2, and Act 3. And for each, I think I kept them to two to three bullet points. And uh, I didn't even do full sentences. I just kind of kept it to, um, like, little kind of broken phrases getting, you know, just to get my point across of what happens. Uh, so that is, that's an example of a pitch board. Um, it really can function well to kind of help you visualize your project as a whole once you start um, getting a little further along in your planning process. Uh, that, that I think essentially covers pretty much everything that I wanted to talk about. Uh, I mean, let me, and here, I'm going to add one more thing. Okay, so there's lots of books um, that uh, are, are programs that are out there that help you with writing. Um, some of them are pretty good. Uh, I like Scrivener. Scrivener is uh, a really good um, program that I believe is only for Macs. However, there is uh, a PC program called, I think, Liquid Binder, and it's another organizational kind of idea type program. And uh, it's, I don't think it's geared towards just writing, but um, you can kind of make it work like Scrivener does. Scrivener is especially for writing, and actually it has um, a lot of um, uh, default formats uh, for when you're trying to do like a manuscript to submit or something like that. So um, it's, those, those things, you can go ahead and use that if you want like a program, but those cost like anything, I think they cost like 40 bucks. Um, I have not actually used Scrivener too much, um, but that was just on me. I just found that um, I, I preferred writing in kind of the, the manners that I chose, which was just basically coming up with my little, my little mind maps and my very basic notes and just writing. So um, those, those are just some ideas of what you can do to help organize your thoughts. Uh, I hope you find that useful. I think this was the last video that I have so far on writing. Maybe later I'll do something else. Um, if you guys like it, please like, comment, subscribe. Please go ahead and share your thoughts about whatever it is that you know you might do for organizing your thoughts if you're a writer or a creator of any kind. So, uh, you know, I'd really love to hear that. Um, in the video description, if you guys want to check out my, uh, my writing and my work, you can go ahead and find the links to all of my websites. I really appreciate you guys appreciate you guys watching this and I hope you found it helpful. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'll catch you later.